Hi, I'm Kelly Dyer Fry, editor of The Oklahoman. I'm here in the Oklahoma newsroom in our studio and I'm talking to these four reporters. Uh, we've been covering the story all day about Mark Costello, the labor commissioner who was killed last night in the Brahms at Hefner in May. Uh, we've had these four different reporters looking at the story from different angles. We have Jacqueline Cosgrove. Jacqueline covers mental health and health in general for us. We have Nolan Clay, investigative reporter. We have Graham Brewer. He's our breaking news reporter. Uh, who attended the press conference today. And then we have Rick Green, um, our man at the Capitol. So we're just gonna quickly get an update from these uh, reporters and find out kind of what we've learned today. Jacqueline, I'm gonna start with you. Sure, um, so I've been talking to different mental health officials today. Um, Mike Bros at Mental Health Association of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a result of the family saying that he had a history of mental illness. Right, and, and what court records have shown is that he's been to treatment. We're not sure when and how often. Um, when I spoke with a family spokesman, he talked about some of the difficulties that the Costello family has faced in mm -hmm. accessing um, quality, consistent mental health care. Um, he talked about how that wasn't enough in the state of Oklahoma, um, which we know, and that also that just, you know, there are barriers to care. Christian being an adult, um, he has a choice in whether he goes to care, and if he chooses to not do that, there aren't a lot of options in Oklahoma about what his family can do um, to make sure that he gets the treatment that they feel he needs. Right. I understand. Uh, Graham, you went to the press conference this morning. You mm -hmm. want to tell us a little bit about, did you learn anything new there? We didn't learn a whole lot new, but um, we did know that um, witnesses kind of intervened at one point. Uh, one new detail that we got this morning was that uh, some people actually used their car and SUV to, to block Christian from stabbing his father. Uh, I just got the phone a little bit earlier with a witness, a woman who was going through the drive through at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the attack happened inside the Brahms, mm -hmm. uh, and she saw him coming out uh, holding his neck wounds, and the attack continued in the parking lot. That's where a group of witnesses were able to subdue him and hold him down until the police arrived. Um, but other than that, we really don't know a whole lot about why they were meeting or what they were discussing, but we do know that they right. had agreed to meet and have a discussion. Okay. Okay. It was just a stone's throw away from where Christian lives. Uh, neighbors there kind of describe him as strange, but really didn't know a lot about him. I don't know if that means he was reclusive or what, but um, yeah, we're kind of starting to paint a picture of who he was and what their relationship okay. was like. And now, when you've been kind of looking into his background today and learning what you can, tell us. Well, what he's you found apparently about. been diagnosed as uh, schizophrenic. He w had uh, paranoid beliefs about his parents, believed they were conspiring against him and and trying to destroy him. He'd been involuntarily committed uh, several times or a few times rather since uh, last October when he was arrested for an, uh, indecent exposure. He, uh, in 2013, he actually called police to complain that his dad had hacked his phone and planted a tracking device in his car, right. just, uh, just those kind of things. And uh, didn't want police to do anything, we just wanted to, them to know. And uh, he's uh, had these issues for a while, as his family has said. Okay, so Rick, let's turn to you and talk a little bit about what does the Labor Commissioner do and how will they fill his role? The Labor Commissioner is in charge of inspections across um, a wide range of industry in Oklahoma. For example, at the State Fair, the rides out there, that's his office that inspects those rides. Um, right now, um, the Governor's office said that they will, uh, the Governor, Governor Mary Fallon, will appoint a new uh, commissioner to serve out the remainder of the term and then it'll be a public election to uh, select a new commissioner for that. Um, really just a big outpouring of grief today at the state capitol. Mm -hmm. um, he was uh, very uh, well liked and regarded as a model public official who didn't need to do it for the money. He was a very successful businessman and was really committed to public service. One thing that I feel like is important to point out is that most people with schizophrenia are not violent. Um, we hear about these things because they are rare. Um, people with mental illnesses, especially who are not stable, are much likely to be victimized themselves. And so one stigma that comes with schizophrenia is the idea that they're violent, and that's not true. We have friends and family who are schizophrenia, and we might not even realize it. So it's one thing that okay. the mental health community has wanted to point out also. Well, thanks for pointing that out, Jacqueline. Well, he had been on, he had been on medication. Don't know if he was off it, but he'd been on medication. He would got medication from uh, Northcare, and uh, he and his father had actually met uh, 
a, f a couple other times at restaurants here in the recent uh, months. And uh, the police said today they don't know what went wrong, but uh, the stabbing started there and, and continued into the parking lot, including at least once in the head. Well, stay with NewsOK.com in the Oklahoma. And uh, as you can see, we've got a, a fine team here reporting on this story, and we will continue reporting on it as more comes to light. Thank you.